we, we recognized at the time that the city of Edmonton was uh, raising the bar in terms of architectural quality. Uh, our firm, ourselves, we had uh, very minimal library, direct library experience. So uh, we literally uh, kind of scanned the uh, uh, scanned our, our research and uh, teamed up with SHL as, as we considered them to be one of, if not the premier library architectural firm literally in the world. Um, they're based out of uh, Copenhagen with an office in uh, London as well. Uh, they were quite intrigued uh, to pursue the project. They had heard heard about uh, what was happening in uh, in Alberta generally and uh, and in Edmonton specifically. Uh, we were keen also to uh, uh, pursue a, a wider range of uh, cultural library education projects with them as part of a, uh, an ongoing strategic alliance. Uh, but we did start with the Highlands Branch Library and um, uh, we were recognized uh, for that by the City of Edmonton and uh, and uh, spent a uh, better part of, I believe, five, six years uh, uh, designing and uh, having the, uh, the library project uh, constructed. The project initially started as a uh, building evaluation of a fairly unique uh, library built in the early, in the late 50s, early 60s. Um, very nice facility. Everybody wanted it to stay. We did a building evaluation, but just the the state of the building envelope and the mechanical electrical systems and such made it sort of switch from a possible renovation addition to a brand new facility. The neighborhood that the library is located in needed some revitalization and something good to sort of happen in that area of the city. So this was a perfect opportunity and the city recognized that as did the Edmonton Public Library. It, it was an exciting time in Edmonton at that time because there were a number of other library projects taking place. Most of them were new. There were also plans underway to uh, either replace or refurbish the main branch library in downtown. So uh, I think they recognized to Gordon's point that just uh, renovating the existing one maybe wasn't quite the right approach. And again, taking advantage of, of uh, our architectural team that and the uh, creativity that we can bring to the project, uh, we all agreed, let's, let's build, build a new building. It was a struggling neighborhood, had some social issues that were, needed to be addressed. Um, at the same time, the li existing library was uh, a hub for the community. A lot of students and so forth gathered there after school time or what have you. So um, challenges there were just to incorporate that and, and build upon that sort of what we called during the whole programming stage, uh, the third place of the neighborhood and you know, sort of home, work and library. And, and it really was a gathering spot for the community. So we had to respect that, obviously. I think another, another um, obvious uh, challenge was the fact it was a fully functioning library. The uh, Edmonton Public Library had to relocate for, for the duration of construction. They did find a, a spot a couple of blocks away, east on uh, 118th. Um, so it wasn't a significant challenge. Uh, everyone was kind of up to it, realizing they were getting a new building. Uh, but that was one of, uh, one of many, and as Gordon said, kind of all related to the community, dealing with people living there and working there and the staff at the library as well. Well, the concept that came through really was a, a pavilion in the park, a uh, very small park. <laughs> the, the, uh, the City of Edmonton, on behalf of the library, did purchase, I believe, one other property immediately to the north and behind the library, mainly for parking, realizing that uh, the building didn't quite meet the current uh, uh, parking bylaws. It had a wonderful, wonderful uh, established mature elm tree in the front. Uh, and so the concept all along was to, uh, in addition to the parking in the back, develop this, we'll call it a jewel of a building, this pavilion within a very small park. And one of the other things too was the, uh, as again, low density neighborhood, single family houses for the most part. We wanted the library to be open, not just to have a main entrance, but be open and visible from all, all sides of the library. So as you're walking down the street, you get a, you get a view into the library, it doesn't matter what what direction you're approaching from. Another important concept uh, was the idea of a, of a democratic space and, and this really did come from SHL and their their reputation within the, the library design is to create these democratic spaces that are welcoming to everybody whether you live in the community or not 
a lot of transparency, a lot of uh, views inside at night as well. It just it shimmers. Uh, so really making it a, an open, welcoming and transparent uh, uh, building that did facilitate this democratic spirit. Really, it comes down to uh, as much as the geometry of the building is fairly complicated. Uh, if you studied it, um, it's certainly not a square building, although that was one of our options. <laughs> uh, it does have a, a complex geometry, both in terms of floor plan, building section, how the, how the roof slopes and the wall slope. So um, again, to the point of a pavilion in the park, we felt with the, if, you, if we can um, deal with the complexity of the geometry with a very simple building material, which really from the outside is glass or, uh, or ACM. And um, because of the nature of the material, having to have these very uh, simple but regulated grid lines where the panels meet each other, uh, turned out to be just the perfect solution for the kind of pavilion that we wanted to create. Yeah, we're able to get these sharp corners, both on, on corner, outside corners, inside corners, at the roof line, so forth, and, and, and have this sort of jewel box pavilion sitting there uh, among the other residents in, in, in the neighborhood. It, it was a perfect product for that. The Edmonton Public Library was going through a rebranding phase at the time. They were changing their logo, their, their branding, and part of the branding, rebranding was to incorporate quite vivid colors um, in terms of their text um, and Knowing that these bright colors were going to be integrated on the outside of the building for the signage for the building, again, creating this fairly neutral but very pristine um, primary building uh, material to uh, help accentuate this color and this new brand was also be behind the idea. We have this lovely, it's almost a color of Gordon's shirt, <laughs> a little, little more vibrant, I'd say, um, uh, colored panel where the book depository is where you drop off your books so it's this play of, of nature with the with the very pristine material the coloration the branding of the library and then having this transparency to the inside as well but again we're trying to get this jewel box sitting there in this neighborhood full of older residential buildings mature trees lots of green uh, it, it was the, the right color I think another another uh, consideration for it, we had, we produced a lovely rendering, uh, realizing this is a <clears throat> pardon me, this is a winter city, obviously. We produce this wonderful rendering that takes place in the winter time, under 18th Avenue. It's not a, it's not. I wouldn't call it a a, a scenic road within Edmonton. Very busy, uh, a lot of uh, truck and traffic vehicle going by. But the rendering really, again, captured the spirit of the building. Where even in the middle of winter, you've got winter around. You've got this. Um, road, heavy, uh, heavy used road in the front. Um, this jewel-like character of the building still was preserved. Uh, a little less direct sunlight in wintertime as well, so you tend to get the light from the inside shining through. Uh, we picked the product because we knew it could do what we wanted it to do and get this crisp sort of appearance and everything. And a combination of uh, thermal systems and Flynn were also involved. Uh, because the panels are tied so closely into the glazing systems and everything as well. So um, that coordination took a lot of time and uh, eventually they managed and it looks terrific. So and yeah, despite the small, relatively small size of the library, it's a very precise building. And as, as we've touched on the geometry of the building, have, have these uh, very refined corners, the simple integration of glazing with the panels. And uh, I think we, we, we did challenge uh, the trades, the general contractor, everybody involved, even ourselves in terms of design and the shop drawing review uh, to make sure we got it right. And uh, demanding on everybody, but the results speak for themselves. It was a small, smaller than other requirements, I think. I, I mean, Obviously, that was an important issue as well, but the product was really chosen more for, uh, you know, an aesthetic choice, um, what we were trying to achieve with the overall building form and so forth, the color, uh, the availability of the product, how it could tie into our sort of rain screen system that we were developing. Um, all those things were probably equally as important, but obviously that was a factor in, in the consideration of the product.
Uh, very much so. Um, the the city architect uh, shared with us uh, comments that some people have made about not necessarily the Highlands branch, but certainly included in the mix is like, why are we why are we building these brand new wonderful buildings in these older neighborhoods? And of course, the response is, well, it's part of the city, and and uh, they're established neighborhoods. They're going through very slowly rejuvenation. And um, I think everybody, everybody involved, uh, whether they're involved with the library, the city, the uh, communities, uh, even the, I believe the, uh, in addition to the local councillors, there were MLAs from the provincial government on board. And everyone sees the building as, as just uh, representative of this whole renewal of the neighborhood. A lot of other things have, have to happen as well. And so, yes, it's been very warmly received by uh, the community, the very broad community. And really a starting point for the revitalization of that specific neighborhood within Edmonton. So uh, I go back off and on to, for various reasons, take pictures and so forth. And certainly since the building was completed till now, even staff have changed inside and they all have the same sort of great thoughts about it and, and enjoy working in it and comments about, you know, the reaction from the neighborhood and, and all the other user groups. So. Uh, it, it's been a terrific project, actually.